What's up guys, welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. Um, finished with all the loose ends, at least all the loose ends I want to do now. <clears throat> and we're going to continue along to Dranglite Castle. Um, probably should keep those on the bar. What are we going to be coming up against here? I think we should be good. So yeah, we are back at the um, Shaded Woods area, although there's three locations to go. So we will continue down this way. There's more falconers here, and I knew that this was a change they had made. Uh, here. Okay, well there's only... Ooh. Oh, there are two here. Um, I did uh, some farming off uh, uh, screen, by the way, and I plus 10 both of these, so... We should be doing pretty well for damage at this point. Incidentally, the best damage we can do. Ooh, he tried to parry me. Um. I was going to put my washing pole in my offhand because it does more damage. But then I realized that, um, you know, that would make it so that it would it would degrade much quicker. <sighs> Twinkle in. Definitely interested in twinkling. Plus, I think there's a bit of twin. Oh, wait. When I was here, or when I played this game, there was a Flexile Sentry here. Still one of these guys here. But you'd get a Twinkling Titanite from um, the Flex, or for the Flexile Sentry. But I guess they just placed it on the ground. All right, so we have the Dragon Slayer's Crescent Axe, which is interesting because we do get some of his stuff with a boss soul, but I guess, or maybe these are different. The beloved Black Axe of the gallant Shieldless Lothian, formerly of Ferosa. No warrior matched the ferocity of unbeatable Lothian, but he abruptly retired from the battlefield and was never heard from again. Some say that he retired of the frailty of human foes and set off to slay the legendary dragon. So yeah, we've seen a couple of Shieldless Lothian, uh, some of his stuff all around here. I guess he was a falconer, maybe? I mean, he was formerly a F Frosa. Falconers are Vulgan, Vulganites, but... Alright. Is that like the third time we've seen that shield? I guess we, we had it dropped. And then you can buy it, I think. And then that's the. Uh... So yeah, here's the shrine of winter. Um, and uh, basically, it um, it won't open for you unless you have reached a million souls or you have gotten the four Lord Souls. I think that's an interesting point. Um, by the way, it could be any four Lord Souls. You could use Bonfire Ascetics. But it is an interesting lore point, because it might say something about other monarchs or other, uh, like even Vendrick, that, you know, you don't have to have beaten the four 
old ones to come here. You just have to have accumulated a million souls. By the way, I'm looking in the top right. That's my soul memory. Um, although it's weird. It's the same icon for the amount of souls I have now. It's just a different color. Anyway, and so yeah, here's another one of these things. I guess I should have been like reading these. Ilium Lois, Land of the Ivory King, lies cold as death. We'll we'll read about this stuff um, when we actually do the uh, uh, DLC, I guess. Makes sense, but there's some stuff about So this would be the third DLC, although this was always in the game. They just, you couldn't do anything with it. So that's kind of interesting. And we saw an item across this barricade. Nice. And there used to be a hide knight here. Now there's just these guys, I guess. That's a weird pose. Another randomly placed, yeah, he was sitting right over here. I've seen streamers or, you know, YouTubers play this game that could not figure out how to get this item. They were like, how do I get up there? But you can just pick it up. So we can see more of the aqueducts we could see from um, Majula. And I think Majula is probably this way, because uh, we certainly can see this structure, I think, from there. There's a couple of rotunda-like objects in this area, so it might be another one. Here's a uh, loading zone. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's raining. It must always be raining in during Lake Castle. Um, interestingly enough, um, oops. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. These are the Royal Soldier Knights. Oh, yeah, interestingly enough, you can get wet in this game from water, but I don't think that applies to being in the rain. Kind of interested to see what they've done with this section. So here's Drang Light Castle. Come on. Ugh. Oh, why did you jump? I mean, I know why, but... <sighs> Alright. Can we reload to get those anymore, or... I'll come back, I guess. This castle is isolated. But nonetheless, you must forge on to bring an end to your journey and mine. She's probably been waiting for this forever. She's been trying to get people to come and go to this area. Never noticed that she she has a feather on her on her belt or something there. It's interesting. Oh, there's like water effects on the ground. Alright, well let's try to get to the bonfire quick enough. And I'll try to come back for that crystal. So now we can see these primal knights, I think they were called. 
Or it's you know they're called primal knights, but like their weapons are called mastodon weapons or whatever. What happened there? Uh oh. The audio too loud for? Oh, I think it's fine. This might be a little bit too loud in my headset. Okay. Oh. I guess I need more. Oh my gosh. We need more. Uh, Stamina. That, it, that, like, there's no way that that was the angle that he shot that at. Alright, how much can I avoid some people here? God, the running animation is so poor. Like, how much do these guys follow you? Can I just get through here? I'm assuming that this is a place that people run often, so they'll probably make it so that you can pass easily. But let's see how much we can do that. So I assume the loading zone will help get these guys to stop following me. I don't know that they would go through a loading zone. Be interesting. Because I want to get this crystal lizard. I'll just kill these guys. Let's try not to jump. Oh. Uh, okay. I didn't actually need any of that. I could use it, I guess. And actually, yeah, she's gone here. I think that's kind of interesting. I mean, she comes and tells you to come here and then just kind of skedaddles. I do like their really slow attacks. Oops. Just you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get them timed right. Oh my god, there's no reason that should have hit me. I'm glad that one didn't hit me. Alright, now we just have the one to deal with. I guess the key to most Dark Souls is, you know, stamina management. And I guess, um, I mean, I have skimped on stamina a little bit here, so I could probably afford to put some more points into it. But I think the thing here is that, like, um, if you roll constantly and take a bunch of extra swings that don't connect. Yeah, I know. Could be problematic. Alright, so... So basically, there's a new mechanic here. Where that guy's soul goes up to this golem. And then the golem starts to move and do things. And in 
this case, it opens this door. And we'll see a few more of the golems. Great combustion. But yeah, this takes forever. And yeah, I guess they've reprogrammed the AI smartly. That once they are uh, done, they'll leave you alone. Or once the door's open. Oh, I was gonna say, these are all Cyan Knights. But I guess. sells uh, repair powder in the building here but just because I want to oops uh, work with these guys a little bit here let's just oh that was weird guys are tanky. I guess I felt like the other ones were um, better, like easier to kill, but I guess not. So do these all come alive or what's the deal here? Is it just those two? Oh, weird. So anyway, yeah, these golems are quite interesting here. Uh, in fact, they kind of are reminiscent of um, the demon titanites, the way that their heads are cut off and there's like runes on there where their head were. But we'll learn more about the golems, but this is certainly unique to this area and to Dark Souls 2. So it's probably one of the more interesting things in the game. So this, I think, is my favorite character in um, Dark Souls 2, at least. I really like his speech. One thing that's really cool about this game is that um, it's kind of like the opposite of Dark Souls 1 in the way that's structured. You have five different kind of paths you can go on um, to start the game out. I mean, and if you're experienced, you can choose any one of them and kind of go, you know, do it in any order and do it whatever you want. Um, and then you're kind of focused here in on the, the castle and, and what, what happens now. Um, and that's kind of like you know, the opposite of what happened in Dark Souls 1 is more you had one kind of path to go and then um, four optional bosses, at, four areas after that. I mean, there's a little bit of variability, but for the most part, it's intending you to go one direction, which I guess you could argue for uh, Dark Souls 2 as well. But so far, all we've gotten, you know, in terms of story is like, we know that there is a Vendrick and we know they fought the Giants. Um, but we don't know really any of the story, and we've just been learning about all these different lands and areas, and I think that's, you know, why a lot of people who like to do lore don't like this game, because they don't really have, it doesn't really have a story, um, in the same way. 
However, what's cool is that there is a story. It is a very interesting story. And you don't really start to get it until you talk to this guy. And he kind of gives it all to you. He sets, he sets you up with the premise. And then after this guy, boom, 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 you kind of, the whole story starts to fall down. Uh, so it's really nice. Um, so yeah, we can see here a, a throne room. Both use lions as a symbol to hold up their chairs. One's for a king, one's for a queen. They're not here. And there's blood stains all over the room. That's because in New Game Plus... Oh, look at this. I, do, I am wet. Maybe it does make me wet. In New Game Plus, there's two pursuers that appear here. So... But anyway, also we can see Vendrick's crest on the banners here. Oh, it's an open ceiling right there. That's... why is that? Alright, let's talk to Chancellor Williger. Who are you? And by whose permission do you stand before me? This castle is the domain of King Vendrick. Is your trespass intentional? His Highness. Where has he gone? So presumably he used to sit up there with the Queen. But this guy, I mean, first of all, he's a ghost or something. He's a spirit. And I guess adding more spirits outside of Shaded Woods makes this guy's character make a little bit more sense that he's a spirit. But I love the fact that in the Dark Souls world, you I mean, just like hollowing, we've seen that process. We can see a little bit here, too, that, like, he is completely unaware of what's gone on. He doesn't know that he's a ghost or a spirit or a, a memory or whatever. And he's not fully sure what's happening. Um, you know, he Vendrick should be there, and he doesn't know why he's not. You are a guest of our castle. I am the Chancellor, Belaga. Do you seek an audience with my lord, King Fendrick? Yes. Unfortunately, his highness is absent. My lord, the king has... <laughs> the queen has taken him. So, we knew from... I think one of the giant soul... The giant... The last of the giants weapon that we could forge that he left at the height of the battle um but chancellor welliger is telling us that the queen has taken him somewhere my lord made magnificent findings on souls an accomplishment for the ages we're aware of this he vanquished four great ones and built his kingdom upon their souls our king has watched over this land since ages long, long ago. King Vendrick, we must fight back, or the giants will take Dragleg. So yeah, there's a confirmation, unless this guy's unreliable, which is always a possibility, but there's a confirmation that Vendrick did build this up um, fi by finding the four great souls which have obviously been replaced, and we've now found them. Uh, but it used to be Olaphus, and then King Vendor came through, conquered everything, and then built this up. He also is saying that the giants are going to take Drain Lake, which obviously that's long in the past. The giants have long been defeated. So again, it's places where this guy thinks he is in the story. The king had a dear queen, a woman of unparalleled beauty. Long ago, the Queen came to us, alone, from a faraway land. She warned our Lord of the looming threat across the seas, of the giants. The King crossed the ocean, and defeated the giants, with the Queen at his side. A lot of good stuff there. So... The, there's a theme in Dark Souls 2. Um, I guess it could be considered sexist, 
maybe it's a feminist tale i don't know but they this game this main story and all three of the dlcs all involve a woman coming to a land that's prosperous and manipulating the king to get her own way a um, little bit of spoilers but um the queen came alone he says from a faraway land and warned about the threat across the sea so they then went across the sea and defeated the giants in their own territory or at least won battles and whatever they conquered them in some sense so now the queen is becoming much more of a a, a thing to talk about and uh everything we know about vendrick uh can be now reinterpreted with the eyes of, with the idea that there's this queen involved as well and obviously we know that the the giants came across and then we had a battle here so they obviously regrouped and came back so i mean we can see there's a couple of different stages going on here the king commandeered their power and created the golems with the golems, the king created this castle to celebrate victory and to show his love, his gratitude to his queen. Yeah, so um, he commandeered their power or he took their power for his own benefit uh, or for the benefit of others, which was this golem art. Um, we do see dry, uh, giants in Dark Souls 1, and we do see golems in Dark Souls 1, and we do see how they were manipulated. However, this game does it a little differently. Um, I, you know, but I might take my statement back. I mean, maybe this is just like the Iron Golem. Maybe this is just like the, sen the Sentinels in Orlando. But it is interesting that, you know, in a faraway land, they they found giants and the golem art and came back here which I mean we already know this is not during lake but it's yet another thing that might indicate that the giants however you know these do look different might have their roots in in Lordran I think I just said during lake when I meant Lordran earlier I don't remember anyway uh, so let's hear what else he has to say the queen brought peace to this land and to her king. A peace so deep, it was like the dark. I love that. I love that image. I mean, we've kind of talked about that before, that, you know, the dark and peace are intertwined, you know, the dark and humanity are intertwined, the dark and nothingness, the abyss, you know. But I just love that there's this feeling when she comes to this land and after they defeated the giants right away there was peace in the land that was so still and so peaceful it was like the dark something that is so abhorrent and so like occult in a sense and I just love the whole imagery of that and also is letting us know that uh, the queen, whoever she is, might be, um, have nefarious plans. I mean, if we are to assume that her dark is out of control, like, say, that of Manus. Is this some sort of a dream? Where am I? What has happened to our castle? Who are you? And by whose permission do you stand before me? I love it. <laughs> he's like phasing in and out, and he's starting over again. And it also <laughs> gives some like credence, the lore or credence to the fact that if you keep talking, he'll say the same thing over again. It's kind of nice, but. Welcome, visitor. Our guests are treated with honor. 
This is the way of our castle. Tell me if you should require anything. I'll take a gest gesture first. So he has the flamberge. Great sword with the undulating blade. The unique shape is designed to pair the flesh and is highly effective at causing bleeding. Flamed burge literally means flame blade, but it also seems to bear a certain creature's likeness. Um, well, the flamberges and Dexels one are used by the serpents, so maybe that. And the Lucy, we got the Lucerne. Weapon is swung up and down upon foes like a pickaxe, utilizing its own weight. It's a decent weapon. I don't know if it's great in this game. Uh, bracing knuckle ring plus one. Yes, please. How much is it? Oh, I'm like looking the side. It says right underneath. It's 9,000. We got plenty. Uh, I assume it's the same. Yeah. Knuckle ring worn by Roy the Explorer. We also have, in fact, let me just, what would be the best here? This inflicts lightning damage. Magic, I don't have a lot of int. Let me just buy... Well, we don't need that many, I guess, but... Let me just buy a hundred of these. Or so. Can you, like, go... Okay, you can go... There we go. Do 120. Um, and yeah, he sells repair powder, and I actually might buy some of that just because that might become a theme with what we're doing here. Uh, but he doesn't have anything new. Nope. And then Great Magic Bear. I think this is the first time we've seen Great. I think we've seen Magic. But Superior Miracle to Magic Bear increases resistance to magic, lightning, fire, and dark. The Knights of Mira are expected to fight honorably with reliance only upon swordsmanship. They only resort to magic the only time they truly need it to face the magic of an enemy. Let's see if he says anything different in this menu. My lord made magnificent King Pangra. So Bonsonson, be safe on your travels. We know that um we had heard before that um you know Vender had looked into the essence of the soul and learned about it and uh Chancellor, Chancellor Welliger says he made great findings on souls. Or, um. And then he talks about the golems. Oops. Oh, I should, uh. I should put on my bracing recording plus one. Does that make me fatter? Probably. Yep. Okay. Glad I had some to spare. Um, okay, so this area doesn't have much in it in the original game. So, I don't know. I guess they're kind of teaching you about... about these stone things that come alive, but I mean, they teach you about that elsewhere. So I'm not sure about that. We'll see, we'll see if maybe they put some things in here. <laughs> That's a good thing to have. Um, and then these doors never opened. So I don't know. Oh, and he falls down. Nice. Yeah, so I don't know what fighting these guys is gonna do. Ooh, 
science halberd. So yeah, he had some sort of lightning attack there, which is interesting. Replica of the halberd of the loyal knight Cyan. Sir Cyan was widely known as the kingdom's most loyal. <laughs> they used the word leal before. They mean the same thing, but I just think it's funny. And when the giants invaded, he volunteered to lead the advance party, but was slaughtered. Dishonorably. The king commissioned replicas of science at Kutramon and bestowed them on promising knights, but not long after they donned the armor did they go thoroughly mad. Yeah, that's the same. Yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought I heard something. So originally there was no stone statues that came to life, and then these were the first stone statues you saw. And I remember when I first came through here, I was just like, oh my god. These things are all going to come to life and kill me. And they didn't, and I felt good for five seconds until... Oh my god. This area is a little different. Jeez. Well, let's... Yeah, let's just kind of... Get into this bonfire here. King's Gate. So, we see, oh my god, are these going to come to life? I don't even want to do this, I'm just trying to... Just trying to show this. So, we saw one of these, although not this large, but we saw one of these uh, doors earlier. <laughs> And we have had the opportunity to see more, but I just, you know, I've gone in a very specific direction. Um, that's a large summon sign, so I don't know about that. Huh. It's like that scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay, so they don't all come to life. How does this go? So now, yeah, we have these ruined sentinels, which we also know are golems. Which is interesting, because I've never thought about the fact that, like, you know, Vendrick was not the one that did the Lost Bastille. I mean, maybe he was then. Maybe I have misread something, but they apparently have the ability to enchant weapons, or, or enchant beings with... Um, you know, with armor, with like souls and stuff, or whatever they do to do it. Let's just fight him in here. Doors look like golems. That's another interesting thing. Oh, great. You gotta, like, plan accordingly. Um, let's get this guy to open up this door. We need this one for sure. Ooh. 
Oops. Oh, man. <laughs> Alright, please go. Alright. And we actually can't really fight this guy in there. So let's just take him out here. These guys can drop their armor. Uh, I I remember I played a, this floor crumbles and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Hopefully these guys come alive. Okay, good, 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 good. So I want to light this area up. I always like lighting areas up if I have the torches. So yeah, the other thing I didn't really mention is that um, they use the golems to build the castle, so somehow he like programs them in a certain way, and then like you know, then he can like get them to move in certain ways and build things, and you know, move things up and do all that. Oh, sure. Oh, that's Bashful Ray. Interesting. Okay. I thought Bashful Ray would have, should have been in the um, in the Black Gulch, but I couldn't find. damage there is probably a mimic. I should really be careful. This is a... Ooh. Now that's a ring I need. Alright. Oh. Someone's invaded? Or is that because Bashful Ray's here? Oh, Bash Ray has a. Uh, just looks around. almost dead. We already got that. Um, and yeah, we're just on our last one. So, oh, both of these guys come alive. Okay. Yeah, this is the way forward, so uh, hopefully Bashful Ray will leave <laughs> at some point. Um, let's go look at this direction and see. Um, Arrows, it's nice. Ooh, frozen flower, nice. Good job, Bashful Ray. And there's these guys. This guy is his head cut off. Okay, nothing new in there. Let's read the frozen flower. A 
stone ornament shaped like a flower, cold enough to dampen the greatest heat, opens the door to a new path from the Shrine of Winter found on the road to the Great Castle. Cool. If you didn't know where to go for that, then I'll tell ya. This always scared me. Every time I could cross the, uh, when I turn the corner there. Um, Bashful Ray. Um, okay, I guess I, I'll, I can just send him home. That's what I want. Why don't I just do it? Where is the separation crystal? Okay, good. Get out of here. I can't even find the separation crystal. Am I blind? Oh, there it is. Jeez. Alright. Just because once you clear this area out once, I mean, it's really, like, inconvenient to come back through here. Oh my god. There's a heartbeat down here as well. Yes, I know it's at risk, but that will be taken care of right now. Alright. Under Drang Lake Castle. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm interested that he got me bleeding in one hit last time. Um, and was that there just a second ago? Did I just, like, ignore that? Um, speaking of which, let's use one of these. Um, but yeah, I think this is the Ferrum armor. Yeah. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So this is the stuff from the uh, promotional material and or the cover. Worn by the Ferosa Lion Knights. The mighty Lion Knights, worshippers of the war god Faram, or Faram, wore heavy armor and were feared for their nimble two-handed swordplay, but their legacy was cut short with the fall of Ferosa. Yeah. Can I wear? Nope. Not even close. But yeah, Faram is a is a pretty major character, I think. Um, he appears in later games, or mentioned in later games, and uh, Ferosa is obviously really important. <sighs> We've seen a little bit of it, um, but we're gonna see more of it. And now we see one of these things again. And look at that. Dark Diver. We meet again, young undead. You have the look of a true seeker. I am Dark Diver Grandar, seeker of dark, giver of dark. If you seek true dark, I will grant it to you. As much as you desire. Well then, is dark what you wish for? Yes. Although I don't know how finding you three times makes me qualified for it. Abyss seal. There you are. You are now a pilgrim of dark. The dark chasm beckons you. Those drawn to the dark are destined to seek it. Finally, you are here, young undead. Now, open the depths of darkness. Young undead, the dark awaits you. 
like his name is Dark Diver Grandal, but I call him Dark Diver Grundle. So I often get confused. All right, so yeah, so this is a, a covenant, a unique covenant, actually. No multiplayer involved. But he makes this portal available to you, and in in, in the three locations that you find them, there's three different areas. Chasms of old, he calls them, or dark chasms. And you try to clear them, and once you clear all three, then at the end will be a new boss. I'm going to try to do that. Um, although this is pretty tough, um, so I'm obviously going to wait till after the game. But uh, every time you want to try, you have to give him a human effigy to open up the portal again. He gives you this one for free. But um, yeah, you definitely need a lot of humanities if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, so anyway, let's see what he's got. He gives you some great rewards for doing it, however. He's got 10 bonfire aesthetics. Um, wow. Um, cast light. I think this is new in this game. A sorcery that dates further back than recollection. So I guess all uh, Ulusil ones kind of start with that. It creates a light that illuminates one's surroundings. Light banishes dark and reveals all. Whether this is desired is another matter. It's a good kind of way to look at it too. <laughs> I mean, I guess... It's probably unhealthy. Ignorance is bliss, but it's like dark might be desirable because you don't know what you can, you know, if you can't see all the ugly things. Um, so, oh, Hex modified from an old sorcery by Galea, the father of Hexing. So, yeah, we learned that this is one of the ways that Hexing kind of came to be. Obviously, the Ulusil stuff, but that was still sorcery. Uh, to use hexes, equip whatever. Okay, I think we've read that before. Oops. Wow. Um, similar thing. Hexer, hexing is rooted in sorcery, but both in both sorcery and miracles, but is viewed as a perilous affront to all life and is banned. I keep pressing B to get back. I don't want to do that. An esoteric spell created by Navlon, the infamous exiled sorcerer. Creates a local vortex of dark flame. And then we learned about him. We know this about him. A hex created by an ostracized cleric. The hex born of jealousy and humiliation is a locus of dark thoughts. The very things that reflect the true essence of life itself. Hmm. Let's see if he has anything unique to say. The embrace of the dark is gentle. Let it absorb your sorrows forever. We'll see uh, some more things like this in Dark Souls 3. They also kind of mimic this sentiment that the dark is like a desired place to be or whatever, that it's not evil. It's peaceful. It's still... The embrace. May the dark Shine your way. So we could do that, but we're going to come back to that at a later date. And we're just going to proceed on. The actual... Um, start doing stuff here so they're gonna follow me so yeah this is So yeah, I want everyone that's going to become alive to be alive so I can just explore this area. Um, okay, Royal Soldiers, Bracing, Chloranthian Gold. 
Alright, so there's this acid here, and it will make your equipment way down. Not your uh, weapons. But there's a few things in here. Um, oh my gosh. There's a few things to explore here, so I'm just trying to... Get people off my back so I can explore it. Um, last I checked, this wasn't a. Uh, this is corrosive iron. So, yeah, I guess this corrosive stuff comes from those ants from Hugo. And, uh,. I guess that's just a bunch of it. I wonder if they like harvested them for that or whatnot. Oops. Oh, we did not read the Abyss Seal. Ring of the Pilgrims of Dark Covenant increases the attacks and strength of hexes, but casting them reduces HP. What is dark? Perhaps we already know. We fear dark, yet we find solace in it. Those who join this covenant can see the hidden dark chasm. Yeah, what is... Oh, I was like, what does this ring do? It says at the beginning. Okay. Um, oops, client the ring. That's what I wanted. Okay. So there's where we came in. Okay. This would be a really cool, creepy aesthetic, except that it's just like, why is it here and like. Oops. Ugh. I should have rolled. I thought they were done. This room is much better than it was, especially if you're making quick runs back. So this is Nishandra. Um, I will just say that now because I won't necessarily come back and... Oops, I said her name. Oops, that's the queen. <laughs> um, oh, great. I did not intend to, to be both. I mean, I'm tr I don't really care, but I'm trying to at least tell the story. I felt like I kind of dr I like just said stuff in the first one, and I'm trying to like tell the story as it appears because I think that's part of the charm. Even though there's a lot of stuff you have to kind of go back and see, and so you know this type of storytelling doesn't lend well for that because I don't want to just like do the story and then walk back through the game again. I mean, I guess I could, but anyway, this is the queen. Um, and there's something kind of interesting about this painting, or whatever it is. I'm going to try to preserve my uh, washing pole a little bit here. Oh, I guess there's another bonfire. But yeah, when you come up to investigate this... It curses you. It's an interesting, uh, 
You can even curse you from back here. I used to, I think it used to curse you from back there. Okay, and now we have this thing called Nameless Usurper. Have we been, uh, invaded by Nameless Usurper yet? Don't think so. I think this is the first in the game. She's fun to parry, but I, uh, don't really have that. Does she get cursed? Yeah, she does. I don't know if that really affects her. So all it does is it lowers your max HP that you can have. But yeah, she starts to uh, invade us a lot. I want to learn more about her. I guess I don't need to do all the saving because we're just going to be resting in a bonfire. I mean, there is a lot of bonfires in this game, I'll give you that. Um, but this one's hidden, so, you know, it's not like... See, this is where the dragon spit down at us. Hunter's black bow. A bow, a black bow designed for long distance is difficult to handle at first and requiring some amount of practice to master. The hunting goddess Evlana was no goddess at all, but rather a brave and highly skilled bow huntress. Long after her demise, the passing of Lord transformed her into a deity. We read that before on the, on the hat, I believe. And, um, I thought that maybe, you know, Ferris was a guy. There was the, the woman that wore the hat in the forest was a girl. And so I figured that maybe that was who became Athlana in lore. I don't know. Forgotten Chamber. It's not really forgotten, as it's, you know, like, what is this? It's just not. Just a, a hidden room. Oh, even that guy comes up. Do they leave when I enter here? You can see uh, the old knights here that we saw in Hyde's Tower of Flame, which is interesting. And now we come upon the queen, the queen herself, which incidentally, I was looking at it from down there I didn't, when I was down there, I saw this like thing that was shiny up here and I wasn't sure if that was something or just a weird graphical glitch, but I guess that's this area. Huh. And I wonder where that path leads. I mean, I know you can't get to it, but I'm just wondering like, what is the actual layout of this area? But let's uh, go talk to the queen. You have fought admirably on your journey, cursed undead. I am Nishandra, queen of Dranglake. 
A true monarch carries the weight of their souls. The last king of this land, King Vendrick, as he was called. He found the strength to rule his people, and when the undead were born, cursed. He found more strength to face them, but in the end, he never took the true throne. So, um, she speaks about him like she doesn't know him all that well, <laughs> which is interesting. We now obviously learn that her name is Nishandra, and um, she says that, uh, that a true monarch, we hear that phrase again, a true monarch, is carries the weight of their souls. Oh wow, it is an hour in. Um, I guess I'll have to beat, the, beat this next boss and get, get on with it. Um, so this thing about, and then that he never was a true monarch, which is something we heard before, because he didn't, I guess, link the flame is essentially what they want, although they don't say that in this game, which is cool because a different culture would maybe see it differently. But, um, yeah. Visit Vendrick. We have no need for two rulers. Hmm. So, again, we knew that she came across and she loved the king and all this, and now she's like, go to Vendrick so you can beat him, so, you, you know, I can rule, essentially. Which is interesting, because the implication would be that, you know, I would rule, but, you know, maybe she's has different plans. Alright, well, this is not the hardest boss. <laughs> However, I have been known to... Uh, Pilgrim Bell Claire, okay, well, with the uh, with the second person, this will be really easy. I thought I dodged that. Okay, well, I'm trying to get that guy to come down. Does he just stay up there now? Uncontested? You can get this guy to, like, hit that area and make him fall down. Oops. <laughs> I mean, this is the only thing that makes this fight tough, is that there's like two of them or whatever. But I mean, they both have really low health, and this guy has a crazy, like the, the bowman, has a crazy low health. And I should not be so brazen. But yeah, I can kill this guy in like four hits or five hits. Okay, well, there. That makes the battle way easier. So yeah, I mean, again, this is another criticism this game gets, that there's, like, essentially two of one boss. I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, we had that in Dark Souls 1, and... They were in a completely different context. I got brought you two of them, one of which you can't reach for a while. I don't know. It's fine. So far, I mean, the bosses aren't high quality for sure, but they uh, they haven't repeated a lot. It's cool evoking of the sunlight mo motif, and then we have some gargoyles in here for some reason. I mean, it's a cool cool room, but I don't really know what it means. Anyway, this episode is long overdue, but let us um, end it here, and then we can uh, continue in the next episode. Thanks for watching.